Hello, everyone. Ron Gerber from Angel B. I'm so excited to be presenting with Mark Glidden today. Mark is part of CoreStack. It's a really cool, innovative company in the cloud governance space. One of the things that I do when I'm not actually running our virtual seminars is try and identify content, new innovative companies that can add value to our seminars. That's how we came across CoreStack. I know from many of my conversations with IT executives literally around the globe that cloud governance is a key issue. It's becoming increasingly important as organizations are using more than one cloud vendor. They're not putting everything around AWS, around GCP or Azure. They're looking at different hyperscale providers and trying to figure out what offers the best solution for their specific applications that decision creates some governance management issues where CoreStack has some great tools available to help you out. So what I want to do is just talk informally with Mark, ask him for his background, and maybe share some insights on why CoreStack has enjoyed so much success in the cloud governance space and why you might want to definitely attend an Angel League virtual seminar where Mark and his CoreStack team are presenting. So Mark, uh, I know you joined CoreStack about six, seven months ago. What led you to make the switch? Yeah, so ultimately, uh, been in the government space previous to that for a uh, little over a year and made the switch over to CoreStack. Um, I, I really think there's an inflection point between enterprises where um, you have this, you know, rocket ship which is the cloud and digital transformation and there's some that are well along their way but there's some that are in some green field and whether they're on a hybrid or a multi-cloud strategy right now we know that um you know if i pull some numbers from gartner right it's like 93 percent of enterprises have some sort of cloud initiative or strategy that they're working on today so um with that comes a lot of challenges what i saw in core stack was a real opportunity to uh turn over that rock to walk into uh, what I think would be the next item for an enterprise when they're looking to have a successful or more efficient cloud journey. Now, that implies that there are some gaps in the services and solutions offered by the AWSs, by the GCP, by the uh, Azures of the world. Maybe you could explain what is missing out there and why CoreStack is enjoying such tremendous success. So I think from the, the forefront of it in, in terms of just uh, cloud governance, cloud adoption today, what we see with enterprises struggling on is cloud costs, so unabated cloud costs, operational complexities, and then security and compliance is a big factor that comes into it. So the next question that we ask is why is this happening? And it isn't always straightforward because as complex as the cloud is, it's also the reward of it, right? You have this amalgamation of services, platforms, tools, integrations, deliveries that come through. And then we start to see that the challenges could be a wide range of things, right? It could be deeper cloud visibility that they're looking for, maybe preventative guardrails, auto remediation, or maybe just an overall real sense of governance. Um, so in terms of uh, a cloud investment that an enterprise makes into uh, AWS, Azure, GCP, private cloud, whatever it may be, um, CoreStack helps by helping you protect that investment. So we're actually building off of cloud native services. And what we're doing is we're offering up some key benefits on top of your original investment. Um, some of those things is offering a unified uh, visibility into your entire cloud estate being from a multi-cloud perspective or offering up say rule-based automation and governance that factors for rules uh, so the cloud team can sleep a little bit better at night. Um, being able to quantify things or index between maybe industry standards or particular internal benchmarks that enterprises like to set forth. So um, those are some of the things that uh, we're doing to help complement your initial cloud investment. One of the things that I hear a lot during our seminars, both live and virtual, is some of the risk of shadow IT when so many organizations are embraced in the cloud, they want to, especially during this COVID tragic situation, there's so many remote workers who they're trying to ensure that they're productive. It's a little harder to enforce controls. And one of the things that comes up is when they get their bill at the end of the month from any of the public cloud providers, it's like, whoa, yeah. look how expensive this is. 
and beyond the expense as these shadow IT projects get initiated that may not be approved by your cloud management committee, not only are there cost considerations, what people have told me, that for the best of intentions, there are some compliance and security risk as people are not necessarily putting the appropriate safeguards around analysis and transmission of data. Is that going on a lot? Do you see that? Yeah, I think that when we look at uh, governance from a whole, from a security standpoint, from a cost standpoint, you know, to, to pick up off of, you know, how much enter of enterprises are using the cloud today, the acceleration um, or exponential growth in cloud services costs, right? What, you know, and pull up Gartner again, right? I think it was over $17 billion in cloud waste. So wow. a lot of the times it's not a problem of the cloud spend that we're working on, it's how we're utilizing it. So um, in terms of shadow IT, where things, configuration drifts that happen, it's not always things that we know, right? There's uh, from a security perspective, if there's a configuration drift, it might not be a nefarious one, but we certainly don't want to ever find out that it is, right? Um, so being able to see little shifts in someone accidentally maybe you know, creating a resource that is opening themselves up to anonymous access or not having the compliance factors onto it um, opens yourself up to certainly risk that's on you know vulnerabilities from threats, but also from risks on being out of compliance or risks from overrunning your particular cost budgets that you have in place too. Now, are you finding greater interest amongst any specific industries or is it more just the larger the company, the more they use in the cloud, the more the benefits offered by CoreStack become more obvious? I think that some, uh, maybe some industries are quicker to come onto it, maybe because of the initial risk factors that are in play, maybe with a financial institution or maybe healthcare that we moved into. But we start to see other examples come into play where it's not as much the, you know, you have uh, companies that do a million dollars in revenue and you have companies that do $10 billion in revenue. And there's no in between of which one is, has more accelerated their digital transformation. So um, it is really coming down to how quick you can accelerate, what that perceived uh, amount of agility you can work with is allowing you to at least move quicker, faster. So a particular industry, I think you're, you know, when you're looking at your big ones, your financial markets, your, um, definitely the healthcare spaces have had, have seen an, an interest greater from the security side. Um, but it, it really is, um, you know, I'm working with a broad range uh, of folks, prospects, companies, enterprises, um, all, all across the board. Got Interesting. Now, when people hear about CoreStack, hopefully they'll come to an angel beat seminar, they hear your talk and say, okay, this makes sense. This sounds exactly like what I'm grappling with. How do they go about installing your product? Is it on site? Is it just in the clouds? How do you go about seamlessly capturing data from multiple cloud providers? Yeah. So, you know, a, a pretty number one. So I'll start it off here with, you know, core stack you know, is a SaaS application. Can you deploy it on prem or, you know, in secure cloud? Um, we understand that there's various models um, that people work from deployment preferences. So SaaS, hybrid, a dedicated on-prem deployment, these are all things that, that we can accommodate. Um, when we're talking about, say, moving into what makes Core Stack unique, right, we looked at look at this from a cloud native governance perspective. We use actually so a patented service chain. So what that is is automating different traffic flow between your actual different cloud provider services, which allows you to get up and running quicker, um, where you're putting in, you know, you're signing into your credentials and then you're working through um, you know, a different service chain to allow you to get up and running quick. Got it. Now, even though you emphasize a lot about multi-cloud environments, I see that a great deal. You've got technologies such as containers where you see some of the power shifting so organizations aren't necessarily wedded to running Kubernetes-based applications on one cloud provider. It gives them flexibility for switching back and forth. So I'm sure that multi-cloud environments are, or at least offer scenarios that really illustrate your benefits. If someone just has one or two cloud providers, could you explain a little bit how CoreStack can still add value in those kind of scenarios? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
again, no matter where you are in your digital transformation, you're just getting Greenfield into the cloud or you're well on your way and you have multiple clouds or all three of the, say, the big players of the public cloud space involved, um, no matter what, you want to rapidly achieve you know, continuous or autonomous uh, governance while you're in the space, but doing it at a safe and secure scale. And doing that simultaneously is normally a tall, a tall drink of water. So um, if you're just using AWS, so if you're just using Azure, whatever it may be, one cloud, um, you, know, you still want to be effective and efficient in your operations. Um, you still want to be able to integrate other tools that you're currently using. So if you look at things, um, say like ITSM tools, ServiceNow, Jira, you want to be able to incorporate those. You will still want to have a unified view. There's, there's more in everyone's um, you know, cloud ecosystem or cloud estate than say just that, that public cloud sense um, or just using one cloud. So there's a lot of other sort of unified or even more granular views that you can start to uh, accommodate or complement with, with what clouds you, you, know, you may be using. Uh, and I would imagine one of the good things about CoreStack is many organizations have other compliance monitoring tools. You will have APIs or compatibility to ensure that if organization has some existing tools, core stack can be seamlessly integrated and operate alongside them, if not in some kind of integrated monitoring solution. Yeah, absolutely. So from an API perspective, you know, uh, a really great thing about core stack too, we are customer and community driven. So when there is a particular integration that we might not have out of the box today, um, or maybe there's a particular industry uh, you know, framework, whatever it may be. Um, if we don't have it out of the box today, uh, we have that customer drive that you know, someone keeps bringing it up, bringing it up. We have always been able to implement it um, you know, from an API standpoint. So then we, we definitely pride ourselves on, on being able to integrate with the tools that you use on a day-to-day -day and make ourselves more uh, frictionless, if you will. Yeah, interesting. So I'm listening to this, I'm going, okay, I'm worried about cost, I'm worried about security, I'm worried about compliance, I want to keep everyone safe, I want to keep my company out of the headlines, and at the same time, I know I need to embrace digital transformation, and maybe using one, maybe two cloud providers, because I want to keep them honest. So what are some of the next steps if someone listens to this talk, they hear you today, they hear you at an Angel Beat seminar, how can they go about initiating trials, start deploying proof of concepts with core stack yeah so you know i won't be the uh, the typical sales guy and tell you you can just you can just give me a call whenever you want um you know this is my this this is a great shout out to the marketing team we just released a brand new website on that website we make it really easy on the trajectory when you get there so your cio your CISO, you're on the cloud team you're even a compliance head you can go onto our website and it is completely segmented out for not only that type of persona that you are, maybe IT persona, but also on the objective or the initiative that you have. So someone that's a CIO can go on and, and look at from a per persona perspective that I want to work on cost optimization. So it works in that flow that you can quickly go through, find out maybe what the current challenges are in the industry, um, what the challenges are just faced with enterprises, say in cost optimization, for example, and then work through that to different case studies to then coming down to a potential trial. So if you want to do the research on your own, we have a wealth of information on our website that is open to anyone to looking through. Um, if you want to get in touch with someone live, of course, anyone from our sales or marketing team, you know, going to our website, reaching out, shooting an email, you can actually just book a live demonstration as well there too. Um, or from an Angel Beat seminar, you can afterwards see a uh, potential, say, a quick dive through as well. I know that we've done that in the past. I should point out the website is corestack.io. That's correct. So it's so that's where you can get all this wealth of information to help you in your journey to the cloud and determining what your needs are. You can also speak to individuals like Mark. You can contact yep. Angelbeat as well. We just know that governance, security in cloud environments is critically important. Very much appreciative of the support of CoreStack. That's how AngelBeat ensures that it's relevant. It's not just the Amazons, the Googles, the Microsofts, the IBMs of the world. This broader cloud ecosystem requires so many other companies 
to fill gaps in these solutions and, and to also provide some seamless integration and ties across the cloud providers. And that's why, you know, from my own standpoint, this we're glad that we're going to be featuring Core Stack in the future. It's great having this technology at our events, and I appreciate Mark's time. Anything else you want to add, Mark? No, I know, Ron, I really appreciate the time as well. In my uh, in, in my user experience side of being able to watch the, the folks, the big players that you get on here to talk, I'm uh, <clears throat> certainly really uh, appreciative of you bring me on, and um, I'm certainly looking forward to any and all the Angel Beach seminars that, webinars that come up. Excellent. We look forward to seeing you at virtual seminars, at live events in the near future, once everything's safe. Uh, we appreciate all of this. You can always go to angelbeat.com to provide suggestions. Please go to corestack.io to get more information about cloud cost control and governance. And thank you all very much. Bye-bye now.